Maybe you've experienced one yourself or know of someone who has. Regardless, you will know what might last a mere few minutes can bring a lifetime of misery. Strokes, a sudden interruption of blood flow to part of the brain damaging brain cells directly affects about 9,000 people each year, being New Zealand's second largest killer and most common cause of adult disability. Looking more closely, there are three types of strokes which occur. The most prominent being ischemic and embolic, where a clot blocks an artery in the brain. There are also hemorrhagic strokes, which are caused by bleeding from the rupture of an artery. So how do strokes actually cause such extensive damage? Well, when arteries supplying oxygen-rich blood to the brain are blocked or narrowed, oxygen supply is decreased, and the neurons, specialized cells in our brain, suffer from a drop in adenosine triphosphate levels, ATP, which is the chemical energy needed for our living processes. Since ATP has a negative charge, and less of it is flowing into the neurons, the overall internal charge of the neuron becomes more positive. This forces open voltage control gates, as shown in the diagram here, to allow an influx of calcium ions into the neuron. They then re react by releasing an excess of glutamate as a result, a major excitatory neurotransmitter. This is known as glutamate excitotoxicity, since NDMA and AMPA receptors on neighboring neurons are overstimulated by the glutamate. They then activate cytotoxic, meaning deadly enzymes, which destroy neurons by unnecessarily breaking down proteins and fragmenting DNA, causing irreversible damage. And strokes aren't going away anytime soon. A study conducted by the University of Otago in 2018 predicted that over the next 10 years, we can expect numbers to increase by at least 40% despite ongoing medical advances and public health initiatives. You might also be thinking, strokes pale in comparison to a virus like COVID-19, yet virus-related strokes are taking the lives of those we perceive to be the safest, children. Although they may not have as large death rates as COVID-19 or cancer, strokes do have much more potent effects. This is because most stroke victims survive, but have to face permanent loss of function which such as no longer being able to walk or even eat independently for the rest of their lives. However, in saying that, diseases such as strokes and cancer aren't mutually exclusive. For some cancers like breast and prostate, around half will die from cardiovascular disease, which includes strokes. By now, however, you're probably wondering that if strokes are such a huge problem for New Zealand, why don't we already have any solution? Well, in fact, stroke is identified as one of the only major diseases without effective treatment. Currently, we have two main options, which is the administration of tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, which is a thrombolytic agent, meaning clot dissolver, or emergency surgery. However, these have major flaws. TPA cannot be used on those who already consume blood thinning medication or have high blood pressure along with the condition that it must be used within three hours of a stroke's onset. The alternative form of treatment is to remove blood clots using invasive strength retrievers, as pictured here, within six hours of a stroke's onset. These also both have high risks of bleeding, which is another limitation. Hence, you can see the problem here. There is such a small window for these treatments that a lot of stroke patients are not able to get to help on time. This is particularly important for our most vulnerable victims, the elderly, who often live alone, with 75% of strokes occurring in people aged over 65. Another important point is that brain cells do not typically regenerate. Following a stroke and even some success from these treatments, the damage cannot be undone. Surviving brain cells can take over the function of areas that are dead or damaged, but only to a certain degree, meaning stroke victims never fully recover. So, what's the solution? Hydrogels, a substance whose normal state almost resembles a jelly of sorts, it's made up of almost 90% water content. They can rapidly change phase to a liquid or hardened solid when a range of different physical or chemical stimuli are applied, such as temperature or pH. Their properties, including changing shape, can be attributed to this unique structure of 3D polymer networks. As shown, polymers are long chains of repeating molecules, which have very strong intermolecular forces of attraction, meaning between the molecules. As a result, hydrogels aren't easily broken and are insoluble, so they don't dissolve in water, unlike how TPA does. 
We can also observe a variety of different functional groups on these, such as carboxylic acids. In fact, let's take this carboxylic acid group as it has immense relevance to the idea of pH, a measure of a system's acidity. When a carboxylic acid is added to water, the hydrogen group of the acid group may dissociate, meaning break off. The result is a basic carboxylate ion with a negative charge and an acidic hydronium ion with a positive charge. What are the implications of this? Well, the body needs to maintain a state of equilibrium or balance, otherwise known as homeostasis. This means a certain pH level among other conditions. So if the environment favours the association of the hydrogen, a more acidic system, then the forward reaction to the right will occur at a greater rate. Hence, the polymer chain will form more carboxylate ions, negative charges along its backbone. These light charges repel each other, causing the hydrogel to uncoil. This reaction is reversible, and the chemical environment will determine to what extent and direction the reaction will occur. This enables hydrogels to be perfect candidates when entering a body's localised environments. Over other types of medications, which don't have the advantage of being, not being rejected by bodily systems. But how do these actually be implemented in practice? Well, in place of traditional emergency treatments which aim to remove blood clots, a promising and more permanent alternative is to instead grow new blood vessels to increase blood flow at the site. This is done through hydrogel delivery of growth factors, which are proteins used to regulate cell division and survival, including vascular endothelial growth factor, VGF, and insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF. This is where hydrogels come in, since they can actually be infused with these growth factors and delivered via microneedles. Typically grouped together in a large number, microneedles are designed to be applied to the skin like a patch. When pressed onto the skin surface, the needles are able to cross the most a very outermost layer of the skin, which allows the growth factors to enter the body without causing any damage to the existing ones. The hydrogels then sit under the skin, releasing a controlled and constant flow of VGF and IGF. This is a safe and effective method of delivery, since the growth factors are preserved by the gel, preventing quick digestion and clearance by the body until all of the growth factors are released, so that the hydrogels themselves can biodegrade and be excreted. We can clearly see here the drastic effect of these growth factor infused hydrogels on the increased number of blood vessels which not only allows blood to flow through alternative pathways, but also decreases the risk of a future stroke occurring at the site. Now you might recall from earlier that strokes cause irreversible damage. However, infused hydrogels also have the extraordinary ability to instead rebuild tissue rather than just grow new blood vessels. The differences between a healthy brain and one after a stroke are a large stroke cavity and an excess of activated microglia and astrocytes, which are glial cells, supportive cells in the central nervous system. Glial cells in excess are destructive since they release cytokines, a cell signaling protein which irritates the affected stroke site. By injecting hydrogels directly into the stroke cavity, this reduces further inflammation as pictured here, showing a substantial decrease in microglia and astrocyte numbers. These hydrogels can enter the brain as a liquid with stem cells held in solution, and then change phase to a more solid, tissue-like scaffold once inside, providing the ideal conditions for them to reproduce other stem cells as well as neurons. And the benefits of implementing hydrogels as a solution to our stroke crisis are extensive. First of all, hydrogels are a much more environmentally friendly treatment, as they're derived from natural materials, such as seaweed or hyaluronic acid, in comparison to TPA, our current treatment which is produced by a DNA technique with the ovary cell line of a hamster, as reported by MedSafeNZ. This incorporates the Mātauranga Māori principle of whanaunapanga, which refers to the interdependency between people and our environment, our taiao. Harvesting materials such as hyaluronic acid aligns with this concept because it not only provides better health outcomes for us, but incorporates the idea that we must use these resources sustainably so that they can replenish themselves. There's also an opportunity here for consultation with stakeholders, such as iwi, to gain insight on how to best implement these practices, empowering Māori people, which is a goal outlined under Vision Mapauranga. In terms of economic benefits, the high startup costs for equipment needed to produce hydrogels 
is a disadvantage. Although the price for the actual treatments is approximately $90 million and very comparable to what we already pay for stent retrievers. There's incentive here for firms to invest in research and development to reduce these costs as the market for hydrogels becomes increasingly competitive. We should expect that this form of treatment will become more affordable over time as a result. However, the startup costs are clearly diminished when compared to the economic impact of strokes, with indirect costs accumulating to about $3 billion each year, as stated by AUT Professor Valerie Baden. Moreover, as shown in the 2020 NZIER report to the Stroke Foundation, 75.2% of those who were hospitalised for stroke were in paid employment prior, and this research also shows that the total income loss due to strokes will be over $125 million in 2020. So by implementing hydrogel treatment, victims will be able to return to the workforce, meaning a greater working population and increased productivity. Now let me introduce you to this pair of twin sisters, Aura and Lerman. You probably can't tell, but at the age of only three months, a scan revealed that Aura had suffered from a stroke without any obvious symptoms. The effects of stroke are different for everyone, but for a baby, the after effects often only emerge over time, which makes for a long and heart aching wait for her parents. This underlines the most noticeable impact hydrogels would have, which is improving the lives of not only stroke victims, but their friends and family who are often tasked with caring for them. With the possibility to regain function that would otherwise be lost, they would be able to make full recoveries, hence resulting in increased mobility and mental well-being. Despite this, a limitation is that hydrogels can't save everyone, since once enough cells die in the brain, death is unfortunately inevitable. Matauranga Māori is also relevant here, since there is a significant disparity between the proportion of Māori and Pacific people suffering directly from the impacts of stroke, in comparison to other ethnicities. NZIER research shows that Māori and Pacific stroke victims are up to 15 years younger, on average, than New Zealand Europeans. So in conclusion, I've illustrated the evident need for hydrogels to innovate our stroke treatment processes. This method is less invasive and much more effective, bringing about tangible benefits to New Zealand, as clinical trials have already demonstrated the potency to not only stop strokes, but reverse the damage. By investing in healing with hydrogels, we're giving New Zealanders another real chance at life. Thank you.